Product names are one of the elements that attract the user's eyes within moments of landing on a page. On most e-commerce websites, the design of the PDPs usually follows the same pattern. The product image is to the left, the product name is either above the image or to its right side. The Add to Cart button is to the right of the product image, and the product info is either on the right or below the product image. This is probably why users scan PDPs using the well-known F pattern. Although there seems to be little correlation between rankings and H1 headings, Google suggests that they assign more weight to H1s. It's therefore still a good idea to wrap the product name in an HTML heading element, preferably the H1. This is an excerpt from Google's SEO report card, which aimed to identify potential areas for improvement on Google's product pages. Most product main pages have an opportunity to use one H1 tag, but they're currently only using other heading tags, H3 in this case, or larger font styling. While styling your text so it appears larger might achieve the same visual presentation, it does not provide the same semantic meaning to the search engine than an H1 tag does. The product name and a few words about its features are great to have on an H1 tag for the product main page. However, if the document structure requires it, an H2 for the product name will work too. Note that the heading hierarchy on PDP templates will be different from the heading hierarchy on category pages or other page templates. Keep in mind that visually, the product name should be the largest font size on the product page. Don't be afraid to create long product names that contain more than just the product name. Two column PDP layouts can easily accommodate this. Include the brand or the manufacturer associated with the product, especially if you sell products from multiple brands. Also include model numbers, collection names, SKU numbers, or other important product attributes. On this dress PDP, the product name includes the brand, the fabric, and the color, which is great for users and search engines as well. On the other side, the product name in the second example doesn't even include the category the product belongs to, sleepers. It may be obvious to users that they are looking at sleepers, but not having sleepers in the product name is not good for search engines. The person or the team that adds new products to the catalog should be trained to understand how your target market searches for those products and should propose product name templates based on that data. This is not a complex process and if you want to make sure you don't mess up the product names, add just the shortest product name in the database and then programmatically add other relevant product attributes to it. Product naming gets more complicated when you don't have control over product names. For example, if you're running a marketplace where suppliers upload product sheets. In this case, naming conventions are hard to create and enforce, and it may be better to let suppliers use open text fields for product names. If products are uploaded by sellers, you should enforce a maximum number of characters to be used in the title. Amazon, for example, has a limit of 250 characters. It's also a good idea to have a system that checks if the titles are not truncating words at the 250 character limit. If you allow product names to be changed, give the update rights to one person only. Optimally, this person should be aware of the impact of changing product names. For example, URLs might change, potential backlink loss, internal linking updates, 301 redirects from old to new URLs, and so on. Also, in most cases, it is a good idea to set product names in stone or to not update the product name URL when the product name changes. But that may pose some issues with new URLs containing old product names. So you need to balance updating versus not updating URLs when product names change. Although not preferred, a solution is to keep the PDP URLs free of product names and use only product IDs in the URL. Consider this approach only if you can't easily implement 301 redirects.
use schema product type to mark up your code with product names, brands, manufacturers, images, and a lot of other product properties. Many product properties are not yet used by search engines, but as long as you keep product attributes in your database, it won't be much of a hassle to mark up your HTML code at a later date. Google supports some of these properties and will gradually support even more. Currently, the preferred way to mark up the content is JSON-LD, 